What's happening, everybody? Welcome back to the doghouse. Today's little Sunday tip and trick. We're gonna do a honeycomb. Something that I uh, particularly love a lot. Um, I've prepped up some tube already, so this video will go a little bit faster. You can do any colors you want. Um, coil pot, like I showed in a previous video, um, over clear tube, or you can coil pot just right off of the end of the clear tube onto itself. Just flare the end of the clear tube out start coiling out. It's all solid one color. Um, striking colors work really good for all your honeycombs. Um, seems to trap the strike really good. You want to blow the ball out kind of thin. Um, that way you're getting a really good trap of that strike. And uh, when you do so and you gather everything all back, you end up with that the outer color is all your pain work in between honeycombs. So what we're going to do right now is grab some hot steel. I don't know how everybody else operates, but I uh, run my kiln at 1065 usually. 1050 is a standard practice, I guess, for uh, running your kiln. Temperature is the annealing temperature. What we got right here is some red Elvis that I put over white, star white. So uh, what we're gonna do right now is uh, clean up the end of this real quick. I'm going to blow it out into a ball. Do some dot work. So, doing your dot work, you can pretty much do uh, anything that you want. Different size dots, big dots, small dots, relatively up to you. I choose different uh, patterns and stuff. Create different designs. Okay, so I'm gonna gather back a ball. This uh, this will be a cap that I'll be using on a small mini tube or a uh, disc pendant, cap on the end of a spoon, something of that nature. They're all relatively gonna be around the same size. Um, bigger stuff, of course, requires just a little bit bigger honeycomb, more glass. Now some people have uh, learned in the past, and it actually works really, really good. Um, some people like to use their marble mold while blowing out their balls. Um, it, it evenly cools the walls as it's puffing out, which allows it to better uh, puff out evenly into a ball. white as you can see right now uh, with this color the, the red um, actually will slowly come back into play um, as it cools down the red actually starts coming back pretty cool stuff love it all right I'm gonna lay down a big dog first all right whenever I'm doing my honeycombs personally um, I don't start out on the end I like to save the end for the end. So I start in the middle, the equator of the actual honeycomb. I start by placing one dot. And then I go all the way to the opposite side. I try and place the dot on the opposite side. As close as possible to even. Now I'm going to fill the void. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put one next to one dot. Spin it around a couple times, I'm going to put one next to the other dot. I keep on doing that until I fill it up. That way I'm getting a nice even heat distribution, keeping the whole object uh, warm 
while I'm working on it. Remember, you're placing uh, stressed out dots all over this, so it's going to want to crack naturally. But this right here helps that from ever happening. While you're moving along, it'll help you uh, not try and fight cracks while you're trying to actually just build stuff. So, what I got there is uh, one even line around. Now I'm going to start filling in the centers of those dots with more dots. Now whenever you're doing this, the uh, important thing to always try to keep in mind. Um, small flame, small work, right? I said that before. Um, important thing you want to keep in mind here is uh, whenever you're placing your dots, in between the other two dots, you want to get as close as you possibly can without touching. Whenever you touch a dot to those other dots, you're going to end up with one big dot. So, to show that true honeycomb, we're going to want to keep that separation in between the dots. And you're doing the same thing on the opposite side. I'm going to bounce back and forth again, looking for uh, even heat distribution. The more even heat that we work, it seems to uh, keep everything better on point, better flowing. Um, even heat, even thicknesses, pretty vital. pretty simple technique that can be used uh, for a lot of different applications um, it just really it's not it's not using much color but you get a lot of gain out of it the honeycombs are just really beautiful so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue doing this on each side like I'm doing now going from one side to the next I'll kind of show you the progress on this as I'm going here in a second again I'm going to put my dots as close as I can to each other but not touching. You guys can kind of see how that's going. Back to the other side. And when I'm doing these, I also skip a dot. As I'm turning around and filling the dots in between the other dots, I skip a dot each time. And then uh, I come back, as I'm coming back around, I'm filling up those ones that I skipped on the second pass. Again, uh, I'm trying to do more for the even heat distribution. It seems redundant, but it really does help out quite a bit. I've done a lot of honeycombs, and uh, I've had a lot of them crack on me while I was working on them and it's not a big deal you fix them and never even know they were there most of the time but you'd rather not deal with any cracks ever <laughs> but that would be a glass blower didn't have a little bit of crack in the work all right what we're gonna do here now that I've gotten kind of out to the tip there take and do my center dot. Which is going to leave me enough room for one more row around that center dot. So in saving those for the end, I kind of uh, able to control my center all the way down to the point. Your honeycomb tightens up as you build out. It just gets tighter, 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 and then you get out to the tip and do your final moves.
sometimes when you're doing this, you'll tack a dot. I didn't, but I mean, uh, sometimes you will. Don't worry about it. it. Gives a character. Sometimes honeycombs, like true live bee honeycombs, they uh, they have blended cells too, so it's a uh, it's a natural form. It's not a big deal. It just helps keep them all different too. Everything's always different that you're doing. Your work's always ever changing. Okay. Gonna see all the dots out on the tip now. Okay, so now we got us a little disco ball here. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and work it all in. Normally when I'm doing this, I do it all with a smaller flame. Um, I just kick that big flame a little bit to give it a quick bask in that heat and then back down to the small. Um, kind of going back and forth side to side trying to make it even even heat, even melt down, get it back to an even ball, trying to keep it on center the whole time ever spinning. Now, uh, one super good thing to know that uh, I was taught a while back and I've learned it to be pretty true is um, when I'm gathering back my honeycombs, uh, I don't give it no puffs, not till the very end. Uh, and there's a couple times when you'll be spinning and be like, oh man, that needs to puff. Well, whenever you puff it, while you're gathering this honeycomb back, it seems to set that wall and set the standards of where your dots are to where they almost don't want to come but draw back down into each other tight again. It's almost like it sets where they're going to be at from that point. Um, so I draw them all the way down really tight next to each other and shrink that honeycomb back down to half the size that it was at the ball. And then when I get it all the way down and all my dots are all melted in and stuff, then I'll give it a little puff and uh, be happier with it. Every time it seems like it gets a lot tighter that way. Gravity is your friend, so sometimes uh, when you hold stuff upside down like I'm doing now, and keep spinning, it'll actually get back on center on point if it was off a little bit. And it's actually a little bit easier for you to maintain while you're concentrating on something else. Rather than holding it out and it gets a little wonky, you want to keep it on point. The more we are on point, the more our work's on point. I'm never dead on, but I like to try. Okay, again, we're all clear again. See how that is? Our, our white. All that color is going to come back here in just a second. Set me a little uh, gold seal out on the end there. And I'm going to come and heat up right there at the, the end of my honeycomb dots with that smaller flame. And I'm actually going to get this pretty hot, pretty soupy hot. So I'm just going to continue spinning right there. Concentrating on that one area where I need it to be. And then you'll feel it start to loosen up a little bit. Keep it steady, keep spinning. Let it get real hot on you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, blow this out a little bit thin there and then just open the hole with the, with the uh, piece of glass. I'll show you. Pretty cool trick. Okay. Okay, so I blow that out thin. To a bigger ball out there on the end of that. Turn my flame up just a little bit right there. I'm gonna go right into that. Rip that end off right there. I'm grab one of these trusty uh, pieces of rod that I had over there. I'll let that heat up right there in the end of that ball. A little back and forth until your hole pops open. Boom, your hole pops open real quick. When that pops open, I'm just going to spin it kind of fast in the flame. I'm going to give this a nice little honeycomb, as you can see.
ready to cap on the end of just about anything that we want. Set that right over the side, put it in the kiln before I want to use it here just a bit. Now that on the end of the spoon um, is going to look somewhat kind of how this spoon did. This is uh, from one of the stuff and puffs. Um, end up with a nice beautiful honeycomb out of the end of it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed everything I showed you today. You guys can hit me up on Instagram, Doghouse Glass, D-A-W-G-H-O-U-S-E-G-L-A-S-S, doghouseglass.com, my website, and of course on Facebook, uh, under Doghouse Glass. Hey, what do you know? Hopefully everything was helpful today, it was informative. If you guys got any questions, hit me up. Private message, I'm sure I'll be able to help you out. Um, until then, please uh, subscribe and keep watching my YouTube videos. One love from the Doghouse, baby.